In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use your own symbols and traffic light type of color coding to bring attention to tasks that are past your deadline. We're going to do this using a combination of symbols and conditional formatting. In this example, I have my project time plan. I have my tasks on the left hand side, my start date, the number of working days, and using the workday function, I've calculated the end date. Now, if you missed that video, I'm going to put a link to it in the descriptions below. Now, what I want to do is take this one step further and I want to add symbols here together with conditional formatting to give me an indication on have I met, have I completed these tasks, which tasks am I behind on based on today's date and which tasks are upcoming and in the future and I still have time for. So I want to implement three different sets of symbols. And what I need is today's date. So every time I open this workbook, I want Excel to put in today's date. And that's just the formula equals today, open close brackets. Now, what I also need is some type of an indication on have I completed this task? Yes or no. So I'm going to add that here. And I'll just put a Y if I have completed the task. So let's say for these three, I have completed them. So I'm going to put Y, Control, Enter. Let's take a look at the symbols that I want to add to this. What I don't want to use are the symbols that are available in conditional formatting under icon sets. I want to make this report a bit different. I want to make it more personalized. And I want to add my own type of symbols here. I'm going to go to insert symbol. Let's take a look at symbols that are available to us here. Now, normally I use symbols inside Arial. There's a lot of them available, but this time let's do something different and take symbols from Wingdings too. What I want to do is for the tasks that I've completed, I'm going to take this tick mark here. Okay, so let's just insert it. Notice that it inserted a check mark. I'm just going to close and leave. Let's take a look at the character it put in. It put in a P, but it looks like a check mark because Excel has changed the font of this cell to Wingdings 2. Now, if I change the font of this back to the standard font, I'm going to see that character that I see here. So if you're using symbols from fonts that are non-standard, you have to have your cells also formatted with that font. That's the one that I want if I've completed that task. For tasks that are upcoming in the future that I still have time for, I'm going to use a different symbol. Let's use this clock symbol. Okay, so I'm going to insert that. Close. Now let's go take a look at the character. Now, surprisingly, I can't see that character. Excel is not showing me that character. If I copy this cell and paste it somewhere else, it pastes. Now check this out. If I go in and copy inside that empty formula box and I press Control C, press Escape to leave, come here. Now I paste. I don't see anything. But I do see this little mini character here. Now if I go to Wingdings, back to the same font, now I see the clock. But for some reason, it can't show me the character properly in the formula box. It's kind of going to be risky if I'm copying and pasting this type of symbols from the formula box. So that's when you can use the character code for the symbol. So let's go and take a look at these character codes. Now for this check mark, that's the code that we need. And I'll show you in a bit how you can use that in the formula. Okay, so let's remember this is 80. And the one for the clock that we picked, it's 137, okay, 80 and 137. For our third symbol, let's pick this one. I'm going to press insert and leave. For this one, it's also showing this. It even took away my symbol. I can't see it here. What was the character code for this one? Let's go and check it out. That's 39. Okay, so let's just remember these character codes. That was 39. And let me put it here because I'm going to forget that very soon. 
Let me copy the formatting of this to this, and this one was 137. Okay, so these are the character codes for these symbols. Now, if instead of the symbol, I actually type in, you can see this is what I'm typing in, it's showing it like this, but you can check it out here in the formula box. If I type this in, I get that symbol. So I'm just going to pull this up that we see the correct symbols for these character codes. So to be on the safe side, it's better to use the character codes in your formulas. Okay, so that's what we're going to do right now. We need an if function because we want Excel to show us these three different symbols based on a condition. Now we have three different conditions, so we need to use a nested if formula. So let's say that our first logical test is that if this is a Y, we're going to get our check mark. If this equals Y, then we're going to get the check marks. I'm just going to put in directly in the formula character code 80. Otherwise, if it's not, I'm going to use another if and say if this is not a Y and this date is less than this date, then show me this one. Okay, and I picked a symbol, let's say, because I need to call my boss and explain why I'm late on this task. Okay, so I have two conditions here and I can use the AND function. So if AND this is less than this date, now I need to fix this because I'm planning to pull this down, and the other condition is this does not equal to a Y, so I'm going to close brackets, that was my AND condition, what should it do? It should show me character code 39. Otherwise, it should show me character code 137. Okay, and bracket closed, bracket closed. Okay, so now I get the symbols here. Let's just pull this down and see what happens because I'm still using the default font here. Okay, now it's showing a different type of symbol in here. What I'm going to do next is change this to the correct font. And now I can see them right here. So as a next step, let's go and conditionally format this so that I can see green for these and red for these because that's when I really need to react and these ones I can leave as a light color. I can even change the default color of these cells to a lighter gray and then I only need to conditional format for two different rules here. Let's add a new rule and I'll use this one, format only cells that contain, if cell value is equal to, now I'm going to say it's equal to the character 80, then it should format. Now my symbols are just like fonts, so if I want to have them as green or red, I need to change the font color. So I'm going to pick this green and let's make it bold. Okay, so that looks good. Now let's go and add a new rule. If cell value is equal to the character code 39, the font color should be red and bold. Okay, and the rest I can just leave that with a default. Okay, so if I happen to complete this task, I get a check mark. If I get my boss to agree that data migration should be pushed back by a lot of days, I could change this to something like this, and then the symbol changes to the clock symbol. Now let's just update the formatting of this quickly by selecting center across selection, adding a bottom border to this, and bringing these closer together. So that's how you can use your own symbols in your reports. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you like these type of videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can get notifications when new videos like this one come out.